Okay, friends, one of the first things we have to do is go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal on our vehicle. Let's go ahead and use a 10 millimeter. We'll loosen this up. Set that aside so it's making no contact with your battery terminal. Remove your radiator cap. Make sure it's cool to the touch. Let's go ahead and press this down, turn it counterclockwise, and lift it up and away from our face. Set this aside. The next thing that we're gonna do is get underneath the front of the vehicle here. You're gonna find that you have some plastic shields. We need to go ahead and take these down. You're gonna find some mounting hardware. I have a 13 millimeter headed bolt right here and then several 10 millimeter headed bolts that go around. I'll start by removing this plate. Grab the center of the push clip, go ahead and pull that out. Remove your panel. Now let's move along to the driver's side panel as well. For this one, you're gonna find two 13 millimeter headed bolts and then the rest should be 10 millimeter. Now that all that's out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our pet cock. That's the drain for the radiator. For this, what you would want to do is make sure you have a nice collection bucket underneath it so you can recycle your coolant. We're just going to go ahead and open this up. We'll let it fully drain and then we can continue. Now we can go ahead and close that pet cock since it's done draining. And then we can move along to removing our lower radiator hose. We're going to squeeze on this clamp right here. We'll slide it up the hose a little bit, release it and then remove the hose from the radiator. You might have to use a pick to break this free. Carefully get in between. Keep in mind there could still potentially be coolant inside the system here. So make sure you have your collection bucket under here. Now right up in the front here, you're going to find some mounting hardware that holds the AC condenser to the radiator. Generally there's either going to be bolts or clips of some sort. Ours has wire ties, so I'll just go ahead and cut it off. There's one on the driver's side, and then there's one located on the passenger side in approximately the same area. Cut that off of there. Do the same on the other side. From up top inside the engine compartment, let's go ahead and remove our coolant reservoir. To do that, you're gonna find two 10 millimeter headed bolts. There's one on the passenger side, and there's also one on the driver's side of it. Aside from that, you have this hose that goes between. Let's start removing the bolts. We'll start with this one. Take that right out of there, set it aside, do the same to the other one. Now we can just go ahead and pull this right off of here. Remove the reservoir. Let's give that hose a twist. I always like to inspect both sides of this. This feels good, we'll set it aside. Let's continue on to removing this plastic right here. There's gonna be a whole bunch of plastic push clips that you can see that go across the entire thing. To remove these, what I would like to do is just come right inside the center. We're gonna pull up on that center tab. As you lift that up, the outer portion should lift up as well, and at that point, it's unlocked. Do the same to them all, and then we can lift this up and off of here. Remove this from the vehicle. Once you have that out of the way, we have a nice clear view of our two mounting bolts that hold this on. You're also gonna notice on it that you have these hoses. Go ahead and pop them right out of place there. We're just gonna set them right aside. Now we can start removing our two bolts. This one's stuck in here. You're going to notice that you have this wire coming across here as well. Just go ahead and use whatever tool you might happen to have that can get underneath it and pry it up.
Go ahead and grab onto this, remove it. Let's follow those wires down. Pop this one off of there. Keep following it, comes right down to this area. Let's disconnect this electrical connector right here. There's a little push tab on my thumb. Press it in, remove it, inspect it, set it aside. Let's remove the upper coolant hose. Squeeze on the clamp, slide it down the hose. I'm just gonna use a pick to break it free. Slide it off of the radiator. Set it aside. The next thing that we're gonna do is move along to removing these wires right here. I already started removing this one so I can show you what's happening, but essentially there's a tab on the bottom that you're gonna squeeze. Right there. So I would just kinda of reach it underneath, I squeezed on it, and then I just removed it from this area here. Let's do the same thing to this one. Once they're off, just inspect them for corrosion. These look great. Okay, at this point we're going to move along to disconnecting our horns. For this, you're going to have a wire that comes in right along this area here. All I want to do is just go ahead and grab onto the tab right where my thumb is, squeeze that in, and remove it. Inspect it, set it aside, and do the same to your other horn. Let's make our way down here. You're going to find another electrical connector. Go ahead and squeeze on that. Separate it, inspect it, set it aside. Now we can start removing the hood latch from this upper radiator support. To do that, you're going to find one 10 millimeter headed bolt right here, another one on the passenger side, and one on the driver's side. Remove all three. Now before we go ahead and pull this down, you could follow this cable and it's going to lead you to this point right here before it crosses over and into the engine compartment. So for this right here, we're just going to go ahead and squeeze on the two little tabs. There we are. Okay, we've got that down. Now we can go ahead and grab onto this. Get this out of the way. To start removing this, we're going to start removing some 10 millimeter headed bolts. You're going to find one right in the center right here. Go ahead and take that out. And then on either side of the vehicle, you're gonna find one up here and then one located in the front. Let's remove them all. Do the same on the... Lift this up, remove it from the vehicle. Along the passenger side of the radiator, you're gonna see where the lower radiator hose kinda of goes into the fan shroud. Let's just go ahead and pop it right out of there. Now let's continue on to removing the AC condenser from the radiator. You're gonna find two mounting bolts for this. They're 10 millimeter headed bolts. There's one on the passenger side and one all the way over on the driver's side. Go ahead and remove the pair. Remove these upper mounts as well. Now at this point I can wiggle this around. You want to make sure that it's completely separated from the AC condenser which is located right in front here. Let's go ahead and carefully start lifting this entire unit straight up. Remove it from the vehicle. With this out of the vehicle we can continue on removing the fan from the radiator. Up along the top of the radiator, you're going to find some little clips. For these, all you would have to do is just go ahead and squeeze in on the tabs, and then you should be able to lift this up and remove it from the radiator. That one's unclipped. Go ahead and do the center one, and then move along to the far end. Once that's off of there, go ahead and roll it just like this, and remove it from the radiator. Now it's time to get our fan onto our radiator. 
Now for this, you want to be very careful not to damage the radiator cooling fins. We're going to go ahead and line up our tabs with the areas on the bottom of the radiator where it belongs. Slide it right into position. Once it feels as though it's down all the way, these tabs up here should all line up. Once they're lined up, go ahead and gently press it down and lock it in. Before we can continue on by putting in our radiator, the next thing that you want to do is look down along the bottom here. What you're going to look for is these rubber mounts right there. That's where the radiator is going to sit right down into, and this area right here needs to sit down and into this body member right here. With that said, I'm just going to go ahead and put it into position. I always take just a tiny bit of lubricant, go ahead and lubricate the inside of that hole. It's going to help the radiator slide down in. Check both sides, of course. That looks good. Now at this point, we're ready to start installing our radiator and fan assembly. To do this, you want to be very careful not to damage any of the fins on your radiator. Should slide straight on down through. The next thing that we want to do is pay attention to the bottom there. Those little tabs that I showed you are rubber grommets. We want to make sure that the radiator is sitting down inside those. Once your radiator is settled down into the bottom there, the next thing that we want to do is take our AC condenser. If you were to look at the tabs, you can see that it has a little cutout marking here. That needs to line up with that area right there. Just carefully bring this up. Slide that into position. Start that mounting bolt in there. Then we'll do the same to the other side. After we get them both started, we can snug them up. Go ahead and put these right on top of the radiator pins. Now we can take this, carefully put it in here. You want to line up those boots that you just put on there with this. Go ahead and pull it into position. Okay. Once it feels as though everything's lined up, go ahead and starting in all of your mounting bolts before you snug any of them up. Now let's just tighten these up. Let's go ahead and plug in our horns. Listen for a click, give it a tug, do the same to the other one. Now we can take our hood latch, get that into position as well. This area here needs to slide inside behind this area. Okay, grab your three mounting screws. I'm gonna line up my mounting holes here. Once again, like always, start in all your bolts before you snug them up. Plug in your electrical connector. Listen for a click. Now for this little clip here, let's go ahead and put it right onto the cable. Now I'm just going to bring it under and I'm going to try to put it up and through its corresponding hole. Now we can start connecting in the rest of this wiring. Make sure it goes in and behind this area here between the fan shroud and this. We've got this right here. Latch that in. This one. Super important to make sure all your wiring is secured. Plug this in. Got a click. Give it a tug. Slide that into position. Now we can insert this. Be very careful for all of your little hoses here. You don't want to damage those. 
Slide that in. Secure your two hoses right along here. Get our wiring out of there. We'll secure this right along here. This one right there. We'll connect this in. Snug these up. Before we move along any further, let's have a look down in this area here at the wiring for the fans themselves. You want to make sure that they're not anywhere close to the catalytic converter slash manifold. This looks good. Let's get the upper radiator hose on here. For this, you want to make sure you slide it on as far as it can go. We'll take the clamp and you want to put it back in the exact same position as you removed it. That looks real good. Let's get this back on here. Slide it into position. Line up all of your push clip holes and then start putting in your push clips. To insert the push clips, you wanna make sure they're in the unlocked position, which essentially means the center is pushed up. If it's not, just go ahead and reach in from the bottom and press up on the tab until it's unlocked. After that, you can continue on by installing them. To do this, I'm just gonna go ahead and line it up with the hole. We'll push down the outer portion, then lock it in with the center. Do the same to them all. Before you go ahead and put on your coolant reservoir, it's a good idea to go ahead and dump out any of the coolant that was in it, and then just go ahead and replace it with some brand new coolant after we get it installed. I'm just going to bring it right down. We have this little bobble right here that needs to line up with its corresponding hole. Line up both of your bolt holes, start them in, and then snug them up. Now let's get back underneath the front of the vehicle and we're going to start tying in this lower aspect of this. Of course, if you had some mounting hardware, you can go ahead and put that right in there. Ours was mounted with wire ties, so that's just what I'm going to use. Do the same to the other side. Next, let's move along to our lower radiator hose. Up along the passenger side of the cooling fan assembly, you're going to have that little hook that the hose needs to fit into. Let's go ahead and put it right in there. Now we can connect the lower radiator hose to the radiator. Slide it in until it bottoms out and then re-put your clamp exactly where you removed it from. Continue on to making sure that your pet cock is nice and tight. Now it's time to start putting up our shields. Let's line it up with approximately where it needs to be. We can start putting in our mounting bolts. Now that I have one of the back sides in, I'm just going to go ahead and start putting the front into place here. Along the side, you want to make sure it comes under the bumper cover. All along here as well. There we are. Let's do this one as well.
push clip in there, lock it in. Reconnect your negative battery terminal, snug it up. The next thing that you would want to do is go ahead and fill up your cooling system. Now the next thing that you're going to want to do after you feel as though you fill it is to run the vehicle for a short while. Essentially we want to try to burp out any air that might be inside the system, so having a funnel like this is going to be helpful overall. Once you're sure that you burped out all the air in the system, let's go ahead and cap it off. Make sure it's nice and tight. Now it's time to fill the coolant reservoir. When we fill this, we only want to go up to the full line right here. You can go to the low line or anywhere in between, but the full line makes the most sense. Okay friend, we got the car back together. What's left to do now? Now you're going to want to go ahead and start it up and then take it for a road test. Pay attention to your gauges. Make sure that your temperature gauge doesn't go climbing up all the way into the high range. If it does, more than likely there's still air in the system, in which case you're going to want to make sure that you pull over and bleed it out. 